Coming to you live from Interbanks Media Studio A, this is Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. A couple of interesting things in the news this morning. Everybody wants to move here. I mean, people are flooding into North Carolina. Trent McGee. The Pirates now looking to win for the first time in Chapel Hill. And a very lucky member of the WITN news team. You read my news! Making your mornings great again. I beat China all the time. Here's your host, Henry Hinton. <laughs> Hey, welcome in everybody. Talk of the town uh, Monday. Good to have you here this morning. It is uh, Henry, Trent, and Matt Engelbrecht live in the studio this morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. What do you guys know? Hmm. What do you know, huh? Anything? Nothing Matt, good. Tell us something. Tell us something to make us feel good about this you know, weather it, it's, situation. It's funny you show that you say that out, throw that out there. Um, we got some breaking news from right. the weather desk. Oh, here we. Yeah. Dun, da, da, da. Dun, dun, bum, 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 bum. Oh, uh, we, oh, we should use the old dun, 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 and uh, I've been getting a lot of photos, a lot of inquiry about what is in the sky. Uh, Are we getting it down this. here? Well, the rocket launched, and uh, as that sun came up, it just it, it illuminated the feature in the sky. And um, yeah. that's what, what people have been seeing is leftovers. From I thought you were going to tell me that the breaking news was that the weather was going to be great for Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. You no, just this doing, is even cooler. You're, t- you're talking about some contrail from a, a well, rocket? Chances are... If you're listening to this show, driving in this morning, there's a really good chance that you probably saw it. And you're like, what is that? Well, I just wanted to let people know what they probably saw. Yeah. So with it, with, as far as far south as Greenville and New Bern? Oh, yeah. Havelock. Yeah, I've got reports of Havelock. Uh, no Oncle kidding. County. And that came out of uh, Norfolk. Wallops. Yep. Wallop, which is on uh, the peninsula out uh-huh. there. It's between Norfolk and Hampton, isn't it? And I'm kicking myself because uh, it launched at 439. We could have seen it here. Yeah. Could have seen it. You weren't up. I what? Well, I was like half awake. The old Wickster was. Uh, uh, I, the last time they uh, launched something during the summertime from Wallops, yep. I was at the beach. Remember that? Yeah, and we we saw it. Yeah. You remember the, we talked about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I had yep, to stand yep. off my off the back deck of my beach condo because, but I saw it uh, yeah. go up. It's like, whoa! Look at that. Yep. I, I mean, and you're like, how many miles away is that? It's pretty. Uh, it was pretty, pretty easy to see actually. 150? Yeah. Say 150, 200 miles. But you know, I could see the little red mm-hmm. thing going up. Yeah. See? You, That's something to make you feel you good. love that. Science! Look at that. Yes. Science! Launching into our Monday. All right, good. Well, that was a showstopper. What do we do now? <laughs> I got nothing. That was a showstopper. Right? <laughs> Three tons of vital supplies now in the... I was talking earlier about the CB. Oh, we, were you finished with that? Yeah, okay. I, space I'm, station resupply. Space station, yeah, whatever. Uh, I was talking about the um, uh, the new uh, CBS News poll that's got that's out that shows um, that um, two thirds of the country believes that Trump is responsible for the good economy because of his uh, tax policies and the tax cuts and all that. A well known. I don't know. Can I say your name? A well-known financial advisor in Greenville just texted me this. I won't say your name, Jim, unless you tell me to. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I didn't uh-oh. say his last name. He says the Dow will be up 300 to 400 points today, reacting to removal of tariffs due to progress with trade talks between the U.S. and China. Could it be that Trump's bombastic adolescent verbal posturing... <laughs> is actually causing Kim Jong-un to rethink his position and China to soften their stance on trade. I love the way he put that. Trump's bombastic adolescent verbal posturing. <laughs> that is about the most accurate description of how Trump that is. speaks. That is. That's really good. Uh, Trump does have adolescent bombastic verbal posturing. However, it does seem to be working. It, you know, And here's the thing. Somebody made this comment. Uh, I, I was watching one of the news shows, and they said, "You know, the reason the reason Obama and people before him didn't make any progress with Kim Jong Un is because you need someone like Trump, who's used to backing people down up in New York City, <laughs> to back this guy down. 
And I guess you do that with bombastic adolescent verbal posturing. But, I mean, let's face it. That's exactly what Kim Jong-un does, adolescent verbal bombastic posturing. Of course, then he fires rockets over Japan, which makes everybody nervous. But. And then he eats cheeseburgers and chicken nuggets. He loves I do. Things. I do. Uh, one, of my, one of my pet peeves, though, is this. And, I, you know, again, uh, l- let me say bef- before you Trump people start sending me text and hate mail, um, I, you know, I truly believe that Trump's policies are working in many instances, including North Korea, including the economy. I agree with all that. However, I hate it when somebody says, when, when, it, when a comment is made something like, God, if Trump would just shut his mouth, and then somebody would say, oh, he's dumb like a fox. <laughs> <laughs> he knows exactly what he's doing. I, no, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He just does I mean, ask the people on the inside that work with him. You know, he's a loose cannon. The guy's a loose cannon. And it scares the hell out of me. Do you see Roger Stone, the, um, you know, one of the, the guy that claims to have been the Trump kingmaker, which, you know, a lot of people don't think that's true, but Stone was one of his early strategists. He and, they, he and Trump ended up sideways, and Trump fired him like he fires everybody. But Stone came out this weekend and said that he thinks that Trump will not run in 20. And that it will be Mike Pence and, um, and Nikki Haley on the ticket. And he says, if Pence and Haley run, I will run someone against them, just like I ran Trump, and we'll beat them. And I'm thinking, who would that be at this point? There's not another Trump. No. There's there not another Trump. You can't find another Trump. <laughs> no. I mean, you know, it, it's certainly not going to be Ted um, – What's his name? God, I've already forgotten his name. Nugent. Well, Ted Nugent yeah. actually might be like Trump, <laughs> come to think of it. No, uh, the senator from Texas. Cruz. Ted Cruz, yeah. Him. How quickly we forget. <laughs> How quickly we forget. Ted Cruz can't do it. I mean, uh, you know, I think he's old news. I don't think he can do it. I think it would have to be Mike Pence. Rubio? Rubio is, is a moderate. I don't, I don't see Rubio being somebody Roger Stone would latch on to, it would have to be somebody crazy like Trump. Who would it be? I Nugent. mean, you actually said Ted, Ted Nugent, Nugent, and that's actually funny because it might be Ted the Nugent. Nugent. <laughs> the Nuge. Nuge. I mean, we had the Donald, then we can have the Nuge. Wouldn't that be something? You know what? If Trump can get elected, I would not put it past I wouldn't either. It could Nugent happen. to get elected. It could happen. <laughs> oh, my Lord. 13 minutes after 8. Okay, go ahead. Send the hate mail. The email is trent at ibxmedia.com. Wait a second. All you, uh, Wait. The, the Trump people are seething right now. Yeah, that didn't go. Uh, we will be live at the legislature a week from Wednesday. And the legislature session, I mentioned this last hour, is is shaping up to be pretty interesting. You've got the teacher pay issue and, you know, Roy Cooper running around saying, you know, if we don't give these teachers 8% increase, it's just crazy. They're already talking about a 6.2% increase. Um, then there was the bill, you know, the, one, of the, uh, the, one of the Democrat libs out of Durham County is promising to put in a gun confiscation bill this week. <laughs> so there's going to be stuff to talk about. Uh, and we will be live at the legislature thanks to our friends at Nutrien. There we go. Thank you. Yes. The North Carolina Association of Realtors, Farm Bureau Insurance, the uh, Bill King Agency here in Greenville, and Doug Henry Auto. Had lunch with Doug Henry this week, and he wants to sponsor the uh, live at the legislature. So we'll be live in Raleigh. I think we're still the only station in the state that broadcasts live from the legislature. Um, and so I'm, I'm uh, actually WPTF, our uh, former sister station. We can't say sister station anymore, can we? Former sister station, because uh, my yeah. business partner yeah. and I had to kind of split up a little bit when we did the WNCT deal. You know, it's really interesting, though. Um, the um, chairman of the FCC 
Chairman Pai, that's P-A-I, he's, uh, he's of Indian descent, and he's my hero because he's talking about eliminating all ownership rules for radio owners. They've already eliminated um, rules for um, cross-ownership of newspaper and radio, and so now they're, gonna, they're talking about eliminating uh, ownership rules for all radio. So, you know, here's the thing. Heads, we, we buy everybody else out. Tails, we liquidate. What do you think? Flip it. Heads, we go global. Tails, we liquidate. <laughs> <laughs> I just think somebody should come in here and buy us out, and I'll just go spend the rest of my time on the boat. I don't know what my children will do, but or you guys, but, you know, it's kind of not my problem. We'll come with you. Yeah, we'll join you. Well, Actually, the truth is we'll never sell out because I'm so deep in debt that we can't do it. But oh, who knows? Agree. You just don't want to hang out. 16. Act. No, I... The ideal thing would be for me to uh, have my son buy me out, and then you guys have to work for him. How would you Ugh. like that? And then Hank? <laughs> That's fine. And I can then I could just That's... come do the morning show with you guys and then go play golf with Mark Pascal all day like he does when he leaves the morning show. <laughs> That's, oh, That's fine. That's some life. Yeah. 16 after. All right, we have to take a break because Becky Gray from Carolina Journal is coming on next after the news with uh, Maddie. And she's going to give us an update on uh, what we can expect from this legislative session. Stay with us. Talk of the Town, Monday at 816. Be right back. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is the truck dealer in eastern North Carolina. We are overloaded with new Ram trucks, and we've discounted every one of them to move. Folks from all over eastern North Carolina are heading to Washington to save on new Ram trucks. Get up to 12000 in total savings on select Ram 1500 trucks right now. Visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. 1079 WNCT wants you to win a brand new 2018 Toyota Camry SE from Massey Toyota. Just listen to Mark, Mark, and Laura at 710 every morning for details on the birthday game. The game you were born to win from your friends at WNCT. This is the Pepsi for serious fans. And serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. help you find the right car or truck this spring here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. See ya. I see ya. Right now, you can get up to 12000 in total savings on select Ram 1500 trucks. That's up to $12,000 off a new 2018 Ram in May. You can't beat this deal on a new truck. Hurry in before they're all gone. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. I see ya. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. Our biggest savings of the year are here. It's the big price drop at Greenville Toyota. Buy Camrys, $17,995. Or lease for $129 a month. And Tacomas, $249 a month at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. This is your WITN morning news update on 103.7 WTIB and 94.1 WNBU. 
Good morning. Time now, 819 on this Monday morning. Latest news headlines from WI10WI10.com. And of course, we'll have latest weather forecast for you as you head into the Memorial Day weekend coming up in just a little bit. Now, we start off Carteret County, one town, the local town's Board of Commissioners has a hot button topic to tackle at its budget meeting later on tonight. Beaufort Town Commissioners will take up the proposal to instate paid parking in the downtown area of the town starting June 1st. The plan was originally set to go into effect May 1st, but people, many people who were in Beaufort's downtown area complained about having to pay $140 each month uh, so they could park and go to work. And complaints delayed the start of the program to June 1st. Uh, commissioners will discuss the plan coming up later on this evening in Beaufort. A DOT is uh, presenting NCA, a, a connector plan this evening for NC43. Residents of one local city will get a chance to, re, to view a proposal for a new connector road. The NC Department of Transportation will present its plan for a new connector road to Newburn residents on Monday. The plan will be unveiled at a public meeting at River Bend Baptist Church from 4 p.m. until 7 p.m. The initial plan for the road was submitted to the DOT by the city of Newburn for the NC43 connector that would run between Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and U.S. 7017 South in New Bern. Monday's meeting is obviously open to the public and free to go ahead and take a view. And finally, there we start. We uh, leave it in Pitt County, and Eastern Carolina Fire Department will soon be able to purchase additional equipment thanks to a newly awarded grant. The Office of, uh, of State Fire Marshal has awarded the Winterville Community Fire Department nearly $15,000 in grants uh, from the state's 2018 Volunteer Fire Department Fund. The money will help the department purchase new equipment and supplies. Insurance Commissioner and State Fire Marshal uh, Mike Causey says their uh, goal is to help firefighters do their job safely and correctly. Winterville Community Rural Fire Association has received more than $98,000 from the Volunteer Fire Department Fund since the program began about 30 years ago. Those are Lace News headlines from WI10WI10.com. The time now on this Monday, 821. Let's get a check of the weather. Partly cloudy skies for your Monday with a late day shower. Storm possible highs in the mid 80s. That rain chance 40% for today. Tonight we'll see lows in the upper 60s with scattered evening showers and storms. For your Tuesday, partly cloudy, warm, and muggy with a 20% chance of a shower, a high of 85 degrees. And for your Wednesday, 40% chance of showers and storms later in the day with a high of 85 degrees and lows in the upper 60s. All right, news and weather, a service this hour of Advanced Moving and Storage, Eastern Carolina's uh, moving and relocation leader. Advanced Moving and Storage is locally owned and operated, fully licensed and insured, ready to take care of all your moving needs, whether you need to move your apartment, your home, or your business. Advanced Moving and Storage can take care of you no matter what. Local company owned by great local people, Linda Bunch. I love Linda and Aaron, all the guys at Advanced Moving and Storage. I've used them many times. And uh, Linda also has a great antique store located in the same building as Advanced Moving at 241 Four Lines, which is just down the road from the Harley-Davidson store. It's called the Loose Goose. Offers a huge variety of vintage furniture collectibles, all at unbelievable prices. Learn more about Advanced Moving and Storage and the Loose Goose online at advancedmoversnc.com and looseegooseantiques.com. Uh, 823, uh, Becky Gray coming up next to talk about uh, what's going to happen in the legislature session. But I just noticed this. We were talking about that cougar attack that killed a, um, it killed a bicyclist in Washington State. How about this? I'm looking on Facebook during the news break there, and uh, someone has posted a picture of their uh, sweet dog who was attacked by an alligator in Newburn on the Noose River this weekend. Oof. And apparently people are making comments. Um, another friend of mine made a comment here about um, uh, that they said they saw two gators in the canal on the US, two, on US 64 in Dare County last week out between, between Columbia and uh, I believe that. And, yeah. and uh, Nags Head, which uh, uh, Mania, which you know, th that area looks like an alligator area. But Maddie, what's going on with alligators coming north? Is, I mean, didn't used to see alligators in North Carolina. Used to see them around Wilmington, because if you ever go down to the USS North Carolina and look down in the water off the big battleship, you can see them in the water down there. But, I I mean, having, uh, having uh, uh, alligators as far north as Manio and uh, New Bern, that's pretty unusual, isn't it? I got nothing. You got nothing? I, I got nothing. I can't tie it into the climate or the weather, Yeah. and I don't know much about alligators. 
Really? So I don't want to. Thought you knew about everything. I, a little bit. I would say. I, probably, I, was, rock, wait, I was waiting I for that answer. I said something like a rocket launch. You'd act like an expert. Yeah. Oh you, my gosh! Yes. But not not alligators. I, I got to give you credit. You said contrail, which that's that's one of those phrases that isn't used all that much. So well done. Yeah, I was wondering. What I'm that not was. an idiot, man. No, 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 no. I didn't. I no, no. I, I didn't say you that. don't know everything. I didn't say and, that. I just I heard you say contrail. I was like, oh my gosh. Henry, I've been well looking done. at contrails for many many years. Good. I don't. Wait, your what? Have you <laughs> Matt, I mean, can you look up the alligator thing, please, for crying I just, out loud? I don't think we stopped hunting them, didn't we? <laughs> that, that's my only thing on that. Is maybe. All right, we're gonna take a break. Matt is going to leave. I guess. Are you leaving? Yeah, we got a meeting today. Meeting? A little uh, weather powwow. Big meeting at WITN with all the weather guys. Hey, hurricane season's right. See if you guys can figure out why alligators are in Dare County. Done. It's actually called a contrail. <laughs> Find out why those alligators are contrailing up to Newburgh. I don't know why I show up. All right, we'll be back with Becky Gray from uh, Carolina Journal. What's going to happen in the legislative session that's already started? We'll be right back with Becky. Let us help you find the right car or truck this spring here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Take advantage of May lease specials on all new Jeeps during the Jeep Celebration event. Lease the new 2019 Jeep Cherokee for only $199 a month. Lease the all-new 2018 Wrangler JL for just $239 a month. Or lease a new Jeep Grand Cherokee for only $269 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Let's see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. 1079 WNCT wants you to win a brand new 2018 Toyota Camry SE from Massey Toyota. Just listen to Mark, Mark, and Laura at 710 every morning for details on the birthday game. The game you were born to win from your friends at WNCT. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? Best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamston, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. 1079 WNCT wants you to win a brand new 2018 Toyota Camry SE from Massey Toyota. Just listen to Mark, Mark, and Laura at 710 every morning for details on the birthday game. The game you were born to win from your friends at WNCT. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is the truck dealer in Eastern North Carolina. We are overloaded with new Ram trucks and we've discounted every one of them to move. Folks from all over Eastern North Carolina are heading to Washington to save on new Ram trucks. Get up to $12,000 in total savings on select Ram 1500 trucks right now. Visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. Okay, the legislature is back in town, and uh, we used to say when the legislature would come back to town, hold on to your wallets. I don't know what to say now because uh, maybe we should just say hold on to your wallets because <laughs> the teachers are, are protesting, and they want more money, and everybody wants more money, but there's been a lot of surpluses in recent years. So, uh, you know, the Republicans are taking credit for tax cuts uh, leading to that, and... Um, 
and good fiscal management. There's no doubt that the uh, state is in pretty good financial condition. I shouldn't say pretty good. It's probably in excellent financial condition right now. So what's that going to lead to in this legislative session? What are they going to be talking about other than teacher pay? On the telephone with us right now is our friend Becky Gray from Carolina Journal. Good morning, Becky. Good morning, Henry. Thanks for having me on this morning. Oh, thank you for being on. Becky knows more about what's going on over there than most of the legislators themselves. And so we saw the uh, cra- do you see the article about the uh, about the, uh, the 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 Democrat from uh, Durham County. I'm going to pull up her name here for you in case you missed it. Who is uh, going to put in a gun a gun confiscation law this week? Yeah, this is of course in response to um, yeah Texas. The, 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 well, the, yeah, and, and Florida before that, right, you know, as right. well. Um, Henry, a couple interesting things. Um, the General Assembly is taking the school safety thing very seriously. They actually set up a special committee that's been meeting for several months to come up with recommendations. They have submitted those recommendations as bills. They did that last week. One of the first things that was done in this short session was things to address that. And, you know, this is a this is a complicated problem. Um, the Democrats seem to just want gun control and to confiscate guns, you know, those kind of drastic measures. Um, what these bills are doing is they are addressing school resource officers. They're addressing um, school personnel, the buildings themselves. You know, one of the bills does just an assessment of, you know, where are we? What do these schools look like? What do we need? Do we need to make sure some of the doors are locked? What What does each of those school buildings look like to do an audit? Um these all seem well, like so, something's get, something's got to be done. Something's got to be done. I mean, I was watching all yeah. the news shows yesterday. You know, the idea that we, you, you know, I I think it makes a lot of sense to uh, l- limit the number of entry ways into schools. Obviously, the uh, they would still be fire exits out, but you got to limit it. And then we're going to have to put an armed guard at these schools, are we not? I mean, it just. It's crazy what's happening, and I mean, and P- it, the country's getting sick of it. And you know, you you can place blame on a lot of different places, but the truth of the matter is, the blame goes on the decay of of society and and the lack of morality in this country. I don't know if it has anything well, to do with video argue, games or yeah. not, but I mean, you know, stop blaming politicians. But politicians have got to do something, and so I'm glad to hear that our legislature is going to do something this time around. I hope it's something yeah, significant. It- Well, and let me tell you, too, I think this is one of the most significant things that has happened. The first bill that has was has been voted on during the short session. It passed the House unanimously on Thursday. Henry, you know, we've heard a lot about help in the schools, about identifying people, um, schools, a shortage shortage of school psychologists. Um, This bill and and I I was not aware of this in North Carolina. We require all this extra certification, a North Carolina certificate before a school psychologist can practice in our North Carolina schools. We did not have reciprocity between other states where, you know, school psychologists fully trained, um, very successful practice, no complaints, moved to North Carolina. They can't be a school psychologist in North Carolina without jumping through all these suits that are very difficult. And so a lot of people just say, forget it. You know, I'll do mm-hmm. something else. Um, what this bill does is it just grants reciprocity that if a school psychologist has passed the national certification, they can practice in North Carolina. So you don't have to go through all this. I think this is one of the most significant pieces that we'll see this year. Is it going to pass and the again, Senate? Addressing well, it passed the House unanimously. Um, it's over in the House, uh, over in the Senate now. I tell you, if I had my druthers, what I'd like to do is I'd like to not only have reciprocity for school psychologists, I would extend that to counselors. I would extend it to nurses. I would extend it to teachers. Mm-hmm. That if you've got you know successful people, professionals moving into North Carolina with a proven track record, you know why can't they work in North Carolina? And we're yeah. we're trying to fill these needs, particularly in rural North Carolina. By the way, the so, uh, the name of the uh, representative in Durham who's going to introduce the gun confiscation bill is uh, Marsha Morey. I'm not familiar with her. I guess she's she's got to be a big time leftist, right? Um. 
Marsha Moore, this is her first session. Um, she's a judge. She's a in the former General judge. Assembly. She was a judge. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. She was a judge beforehand. Um, this seems like just drastic measures um, to me. You know, Henry, there was a Civitas poll that was released last week, and they asked the question, just kind of an open-ended question, what do you think we should do to ensure, to address the school safety issue? And I think it was 48% of the respondents said school resource officers, armed guards, you know, law enforcement in the schools, um, like 5% said gun control. Yeah. And then on that, 2% said more school funding. So I think people Mm. across the state get it. You know, they understand um, what this is, that um, that 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 will continue to be discussed this short session for sure. I I, want to talk about the teacher pay issue for a second. And I don't want to dominate. I just want to hit on this because we've, God, we've just talked about it so long forever. And we've talked about it a lot on the show. But uh, the, 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 the legislative leadership, when they found out that there was going to be this big protest last Wednesday and uh, that Cooper put 8% pay raise in his, uh, in his, his uh, budget um, proposal, which will you know mean nothing to the legislature. But I was interested that the legislature came back with a 6.2% increase for school teachers. Now, the big argument that I hear these days is that the older school teachers, the teachers with the longevity, the ones that have been in there 20, 25 years, they're the ones that are really not getting taken care of. Is that right in your opinion? And is something going to be done this time around? What? Just touch on the teacher pay issue a little bit. Okay. Yeah. A couple points. Um, first of all, the 6.2% pay increase for teachers is already in the budget. Yeah. yeah. I should remind Governor Cooper that the General Assembly passes a two-year budget. They come back the short session to tweak the budget that was passed last year. We already have a budget in place. In that budget was 6.2%. So the General Assembly didn't do this in response to the teacher uh, protest. They did this last year when they passed the You know, that's a budget. great point that nobody's made up until that moment. I, that point has mm-hmm. not gotten through, I don't think. Mm-hmm. I, you know, in this fact, I didn't even, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. yeah, this wasn't in response. So, I mean, you know, the, to the, teacher, the teachers are leaving their classroom last Wednesday and going out and, and, and protesting, and they already had been promised and already had a 6.2% pay raise guaranteed. That is correct. Wow, I wish I'd known that. I would have been a little more vehement in my comments. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, so, um, you know, that, that's already baked into the budget. Um, the teachers have had a 19% pay, average pay increase since, I think, 2011. It's over the last five years. This will be the fifth consecutive pay increase that they have had. Now, Henry, you mentioned um, kind of the imbalance between beginning teachers and the veteran teachers. That was something that was addressed with the first teacher pay increase. You know, what we've seen in the past is just across the board pay increases for everybody, no matter what. What we looked at and what the General Assembly very thoughtfully did is they looked at, okay, what does our teacher population look like? What is our goal here? What, what do we need to do to ensure that we have good teachers in every classroom to offer every student the best opportunity that they can have? What they learned was our beginning pay scale was kind of out of kilter. We mm-hmm. needed to attract more teachers into the profession. Right, right. So to do that, they front-loaded it, if you will, that first round of teacher pay increases. So they brought up the beginning teacher pay. I think it's $35,000 yep. now. I think yep. it was twenty eight, maybe, when we started this. Mm-hmm. But there's been a significant increase there. The intent of that was, what do we do to get good teachers into the classroom? Not this teacher union idea of everybody deserves the same. So, you know, they did that the first year. Veteran teachers came back and said, hey, wait a minute, what about us? I think it was a legitimate point. You know, you also want to reward those good teachers who have been in the classroom for those years. So they have addressed that since then. I don't have those percentages in front of me, Henry, but every teacher has gotten a pay increase over that time. I think it's important to recognize, too, that, you know, as you mentioned, these tax cuts, you know, as we've had the personal income reduced from 7.75% highest marginal rate down to five, under 5.5%, teachers pay taxes too. So, you know, this That's is another point. benefit. Yeah. So, well, the you know, the, the, uh, I, I just think it's yeah. – don't you think it's this it, – it just seems strange to me that they would uh, focus in on teacher pay. 
except for the fact that the North Carolina Association of Educators is run by lefties. And they, the they just they just want to use this to try to make a big deal out of this to um, to try to take Republicans out in November. And the sad thing to me about it is, and I'm going to say this again, I make teachers mad when I say this, but they're using teachers and teachers need to educate themselves on what's being done and what's happening. I mean, even the 6.2 that was already in the budget, I didn't know. So, I mean, I, and, I, and I, I, I will say again, I do not believe teachers make what they should. I think that they should uh, continue to get these pay increases. We need to get up over the national average. I, I totally agree with that. But I also really, in my heart of heart, believe a heart of hearts believe that that this is nothing but a, a lefty organization uh, strategy to try to beat Republicans in November. Do you agree with me on that? Henry, that is exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, this teacher union, the NCAE, is tied to the largest union, I think, in the world. Um, this is a national movement. We saw it in Charleston, West Virginia. I think we saw it in Arkansas. I mean, these have been going on acra across the country. Uh, the union came in. I agree with you. They used the situation in North Carolina. They used North Carolina teachers. This is about the left energizing their base. We saw That's it. Right. I'd make an analogy with the Moral Monday protests and crowds. thing that, that really struck me last Wednesday as we talked to teachers, as we walked around, as we saw legislators talking to teachers, the teachers were, the teachers I talked to and most of the teachers there were not union driven. These were good educators who had concerns, great conversation with their legislators. Legislators learned a lot. Teachers learned a lot. It's opened up this dialogue. I think what we're going to see across the state is legislators being invited into classrooms. I think we're going to see teachers visiting more regularly with their legislators. They don't need a union to do that. This is just, you know, I think mm -hmm. that was a great exercise. Yeah. I wish that it had happened on a non-instructional day, to be honest with you. Well, and, and, um, and exactly. That, and, and the other thing, too, Becky, is, is the whole idea that part of their agenda was to uh, – to, to end performance pay and to uh, try to get taxes increased. I mean, I, I got a hold of their flyer that they were putting out, which was their talking points they wanted the teachers to talk to the legislators about. And, you know, I got no problem with extra uh, – I got no problem with them wanting teachers' assistance back. That's, that's, that's been controversial, and I don't think it's going to happen. I got no problem with them asking for more uh, – uh, pay for uh, themselves and for principals. I got no problem with asking for more materials in their classroom. What in the world in, are they doing talking to the uh, legislators about increasing taxes? They want it because they were complaining right. about the corporate tax. And then the other thing is they don't want to be paid based on performance. Well, welcome to the world and the rest of the world, <laughs> the way we operate. So, uh, right. and, you know, yeah, enough on, enough on yeah. teacher pay. Uh, talk about yeah. some of the other big issues that are coming up. I got a list of them here. I'll throw some out. Uh, you may think that these are going to be big or not big. Uh, prison safety, uh, the Gen X issue, redistricting. Uh, Cooper wants um, a, another bond for school construction. Uh, what's going to get traction in this session, Becky? Um, uh, there will not be a bond for school construction. I'm just going to kind of stick my neck out with that. There's a lot of people that have real concerns about how that money would be spent, whether those school districts that need, the, particularly the rural school districts, if there would be enough money when you break it all up to really make a difference. I don't think there would be a school construction. You think piece. some of it might go uh, into prison, Cooper's pipeline fund? Just kidding. Go ahead. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the prison safety, I think that will be addressed as well. Um, you know, we're talking about and there may be some additional pay increases for prison guards. Henry, what we know from research, and there's some national research studies being done, is where you really make a difference in prison safety is with the wardens. Um, you know, so what I'm hoping, probably not a short session issue, but a long session issue, when we really look at the management of the prisons, much like mm -hmm. you would in a company, um, I'd make an analogy between a principal at a school and the difference that they make and what a warden at a prison could, um, the difference that they could make. But the, but but the other to thing, mention, too, with that, Becky, you know, here in our listening area, we've had uh, murders. We had, uh, we had the young lady from Edenton who was murdered up in Bertie. We had the uh, attacks up in Elizabeth City. Uh, I mean, they, they're going to have to deal with the, the, the staffing issue, are they not? These prisons up Absolutely. here in eastern North Carolina are, are, are chronically short-staffed. 
and uh, I don't think they're trained, and they need better body armor and things like that. I mean, the, the General Assembly's got to pay some attention to that this time. Right, and I think that it goes beyond, just like with our teacher pay issue, state employees pay issue, I think it goes beyond the pay. I mean, you know, you can increase the salary tremendously, and I mean, who, who's going to turn down a pay increase? But it's working conditions, and it's the safety of the facilities that they're in. That yeah. I think you're exactly right, and I yeah. think we'll see some, some attention paid to that. But, Henry, before we go, I've just got to point out, if you want to know what the difference between Republican leadership and Democrat leadership, look at the budget this short session. The General Assembly started the budget discussions with what they could spend. They looked at revenue. They got all these numbers from experts. They got stuff from the governor's budget office, fiscal research, Department of Revenue. They determined, okay, this is how much we can afford to spend. They started out with that point. The governor started out the budget discussions with how much he wanted to spend. Not how much, no, I'm sorry, not how much he wanted to spend, what he wanted to spend, how much he wanted to spend. $130 million for this, $100 million for that, $6 million for Gen X. You know, it just, it was the wish list. So there's a real, and then, and then he says, okay, to pay for this, I'm going to increase taxes, like dramatically. I'm going to roll back the tax cuts that have been put into place in last year's budget. So if you want to know what the difference between Republican leadership and Democrat leadership, there's no better illustration than the way that the budget process has been approached this short session. Uh, amen, sister. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just <laughs> kind of typical. Before we go, address Gen X, because that's an Eastern North Carolina issue. This company was dumping uh, chemicals into the water down the Cape Fear River. Uh, at one point, the former uh, former mayor of Wilmington was telling people in Wilmington, you shouldn't be drinking the water. I'm not sure that's accurate, but uh, th there's been a lot of hysteria about that. And then it brings up the greater question of what's in our water statewide. And if that can happen down in Fayetteville in Wilmington, you know, what could happen here in eastern North Carolina? We've got rivers and streams that are our uh, that are drinking water. Uh, for all over the place here. So, uh, are they uh, the 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 House unanimously passed a Gen X bill in the last session, and the Senate wouldn't go there, and I never understood that. But uh, what's happening with that now? Is there going to be some sort of a uh, a bill passed in this session to deal with uh, uh, making sure our drinking water is safe? Well, there's already been something that was filed last week, just again in the first you know couple of days of the short session. Um, interestingly enough, the general in this in this bill, the general assembly gives the governor the authority to close that close that company down if they don't clean up the water. If there's you know, so I mean that's pretty that's pretty dramatic. Um, I think the general assembly is losing patience with this. Um, the other thing is kind of on the other side of it. So yeah, I mean first of all, Henry, yes, they're absolutely going to address it. And, you know, a pretty pretty much, hey, we've had enough. You either fix this or we're going to close you down. They're authorizing the governor to do that. Um, there's some other pieces in there as well. But kind of the other side of this is, too, um, the technology that is being developed as a result of this Gen X problem. You mentioned the water supply across the state. Some of this technology, these filter um, things, we live here, Research Triangle Park, the engineering and the environmental work that's being done at NC State, at UNC Wilmington, at East Carolina, you know, we, we also need to take advantage of that. What are the new technologies that can be applied to ensure that the water supply is safe? I think we can all agree if there's, if there's a core function of government, it is to provide <clears throat> water and sewer and, you know, those kind of things in a safe manner that we can count on. So, yeah, that uh, there was a bill filed last week, and I haven't had a chance to look at all the details on it, but it absolutely addresses that. So they're taking that seriously, and we'll be watching that carefully. So just, you know, watch carolinajournal.com throughout the week. Actually, throughout the session, we are yeah. uh, posting several times a day on what's going on. Yeah, you guys, I will have to, I'll have to give you credit where mm -hmm. credit's due. You guys do a better job of covering, covering the legislature than anyone, than anyone. Well, ha have, you got, have you got time for one more quick question? Sure. I, I just want to ask you, again, if you're just joining us, this is Becky Gray from Carolina Journal. Uh, Becky, uh, the, the incentives that we're hearing now, we've been hearing about Amazon, 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 and Raleigh. Now we're hearing about Apple. And apparently um, uh, the, um, what's his name, the, the guy that spoke at Duke, who's the, the CEO of Apple, was over here. He met with Cooper. He must have met with some of the legislature. 
And they're talking about uh, bringing a huge Apple operation to Research Triangle Park. And it looks like the General Assembly is going to put a bunch of incentives in the budget for that. This is controversial to me. I mean, again, you know, we have not landed any of the big stuff that we've thrown out there, um, uh, really, when you think about it, uh, for eastern North Carolina with these incentives. But uh, is there going to be a bunch of incentives in this budget for Apple and maybe even Amazon? There's a huge package uh, that was announced last week that will be in the budget. <laughs> now, Senator Phil Berger said this isn't for any particular company. So, you know, yeah, but that's BS, says, right? Right. Yeah, it's kind of like you know, wink, wink. Yeah, it's um, for Apple. That I said last week that you know when the press release goes out, uh, they say, well, this isn't for any particular company. But when you know when the when the when you guys go by the uh, Phil Berger's office to pick it up, somebody in the communications office goes, hey, it's okay to leak that this is for Apple. <laughs> well, it, you know, it, it's clearly for a big fish because the criteria to qualify for this incentive is very large. Um, I think it's a billion dollars in investments and creating 300,000 new jobs. So I mean, 300,000 for a big fish. Did you say 300,000 new jobs? I think that's right. Or maybe it's 30,000. Yeah, I don't um, think it's 300,000. I, mean, I, I don't have the bill in front of yeah. me. But I mean, it's clearly to attract a big fish here. Um, you know, it, you said it was controversial. Here, I'm going to be honest with you. I think, you know, you and I and the taxpayers are the only ones that think this is controversial. I am always surprised at the legislature. Some of the most conservative legislators, you know, are very much in favor of this. I had a conversation with uh, Darren Jackson, the House minority leader, and he said, and he's been opposed to incentives in the past. And he said, you know, I got to go. So to was the governor, by the way. We remember the campaign against and, McCrory? Yeah. The governor campaigned well, against these incentives when he was out there campaigning against McCrory. Now he's all in on them. Right. And don't you think it's interesting that the governor wants to increase taxes, but he wants to give these huge tax breaks yeah. to these multi-billion exactly. dollar companies? Exactly. Um, all right, Becky, we got thing, we, you know, local. Yeah, local incentives are part of that, too. So we'll be we'll be watching that. I think it's a done deal, Henry, to be honest with you. I'm sure it is. But um, we need we need to hold them accountable. Thank you, Becky. Great talking to you. We'll talk again as we get closer to the, in the middle of the session. How about that? Sounds great. All right, Love and stop by and see us. Henry, we're going to be you. we're going to be doing our show live at the legislature coming up on uh, week from Wednesday. Stop by and see us. Oh, I'll stop by for sure. Yeah, we'll be at the great. Daily Planet. We'll have you have you on over there. Thank you, Becky. Okay. All right, it's yeah. nine Henry, minutes in front of nine o'clock. Thank you, dear. Talk to you soon. All right, we'll be back with McGee and Sports. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is the truck dealer in Eastern North Carolina. We are overloaded with new Ram trucks, and we've discounted every one of them to move. Folks from all over Eastern North Carolina are heading to Washington to save on new Ram trucks. Get up to $12,000 in total savings on select Ram 1500 trucks right now. Visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. 1079 WNCT wants you to win a brand new 2018 Toyota Camry SE from Massey Toyota. Just listen to Mark, Mark, and Laura at 710 every morning for details on the birthday game. The game you were born to win from your friends at WNCT. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? Best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. help you find the right car or truck this spring here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. See ya. Bye, see ya. Right now, you can get up to 12000 in total savings on select Ram 1500 trucks. That's up to $12,000 off a new 2018 Ram in May. You can't beat this deal on a new truck. Hurry in before they're all gone. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Bye, see ya. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. 
so people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. Our biggest savings of the year are here. It's the big price drop at Greenville Toyota. Buy Camrys, $17,995. Or lease for $129 a month. And Tacomas, $249 a month at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Talk of the Town Sports at 855, brought to you this morning by Country Mart, the home of 93-octane ethanol-free gas, which is great for your boat engines, small engines of all kind, including uh, lawnmowers. This is that time of year, so uh, check it out, Country Mart stores in, uh, on Highway 11 just outside Greenville and uh, also at 903 in Stokes. And don't forget Smitty's Restaurant for some great country cooking, including made-from-scratch desserts. In the Highway 11 store. No telling what uh, Pat will be cooking up today at Smitty's. I might make an appearance over there later. We'll see. Uh, 8.55. McGee had to run. Here are a couple of sports headlines. The uh, conference tournament is underway now from uh, Spectrum Field, or it will get underway tomorrow from Spectrum Field in Clearwater, Florida. ECU is now the fourth seed after dropping two or three to UConn. And they will play against uh, the number five seed, Central Florida, at 3 o'clock tomorrow. We will have uh, that game for you on 94.3 The Game, our sister station, with airtime at 2.45 tomorrow afternoon. Tournament will be played in a double elimination format throughout the semifinal round. And Stephen Curry, 35 points to lead the Warriors to a 126-85 route of the Rockets yesterday. 16th consecutive home postseason win for the Warriors, a new NBA record. Golden State now leads 2-1, to one, game four of the Eastern Conference Finals tonight in Cleveland. That'll do it for us. Everybody enjoy your uh, Monday, your back-to-work day, and uh, I'm just going to predict that the weather will uh, improve as we get through the week. Finally get to Friday, it's going to be nice, but uh, more rain coming, so take the umbrella. We'll see you tomorrow. help you find the right car or truck this spring here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Take advantage of May lease specials on all new Jeeps during the Jeep Celebration event. Lease the new 2019 Jeep Cherokee for only $199 a month. Lease the all new 2018 Wrangler JL for just $239 a month. Or lease a new Jeep Grand Cherokee for only $269 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. MTS. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is the truck dealer in Eastern North Carolina. We are overloaded with new Ram trucks and we've discounted every one of them to move. 
Folks from all over Eastern North Carolina are heading to Washington to save on new Ram trucks. Get up to 12000 in total savings on select Ram 1500 trucks right now. Visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. We'll be right back.